what I tell all salespeople. You're not learning how to sell. People hate being sold, but they love shopping with friends. Sales is just a transfer of enthusiasm at the end of the day. I'm honestly feeling a little nervous right now. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't remember how to put on a tie. <laughs> but I used to put this on every single day for work back in the day. But Ryan's kind of a big deal. Oh, he still remembers how to tie a tie, look at that. All right, so we're headed into Ryan Sarian's place to ask him a ton of life advice about how he went from rags to riches, so from literally zero dollars into building a multi-million dollar real estate empire. So we'll see how it goes. So Ryan? Yes. Many people already know you, but what's, what's your story? What's your quick high level? Oh God. Ah. Uh, my name is Ryan Sirhans. I am a real estate broker and broker owner here in New York City. I uh, was born in Texas, moved here in 2006 after college um, to do theater, totally ran out of money, and then got my real estate license to pay my bills. Most people know me from a TV show I got onto not too long after that, which is called the Million Dollar Listing New York on Bravo, and built a huge sales team and then turned it into my own company. And here we are. Here we are. Rise or just story. I'm excited to dive in throughout the day. Let's do it. Nice suit. Thanks for dressing up. <laughs> So, what does your typical day look like? Sunday through Friday, I wake up at 4.30, get out of bed by like 4.40, 4.45, in the gym by 5.30, and then I work out, and depending on the day, I work out for somewhere between an hour, an hour and a half, just completely depending. And then I shower, get ready, say hi to my wife if she's awake, <laughs> and I'll say hi to the baby if the baby's awake, and then I jump in the car with Yuri. This is Yuri, Yuri's been with me for 10 years. Um, and we start our day and then I work, you know, we work in the car, like part of the reason of having a driver in New York is one, there's nowhere to park. Um, two, like commuting totally sucks as a complete waste of time. So it's an investment back into the day to buy my time back. And, uh, then we run around, I'm in showings, I'm in appointments, I'm in meetings, you know, I'm in company meetings, I'm in like revenue meetings, I'm in, I, you know, recruitments, I mean, all kinds of stuff. And then we film content and my business is broken down into three. So there's the real estate brokerage and then there's the education company. So it's sell it like Sirhan. So there's the ed tech stuff. And then we have the production companies. And so there's a lot of branding content that we create, different social content that we're creating. So how are you staying sane in the sense that you're switching contexts mm -hmm. all the time, different businesses, different clients? Sort of, but I'm not, right? Like the, I'm not going in between like, over here I'm doing wine and then over here I'm doing bed sheets and over here I'm like a surgeon, yeah. you know? Like our oak tree um, is real estate. And then my branches are different pieces of that. So then it's real estate sales, real estate development, real estate agents, real estate buyers and sellers, real estate content, real estate sales education, which is a really, really big branch. And then there's the real estate guy, which is me, which people know me as. So. I'm still like the same person as I go into all the meetings, into all the stuff. Some things I'm just far more serious than others. Right? It's like serious Ryan when I'm sitting there looking at P&Ls and then more fun Ryan when, you know, Diego from our studio's team is like, okay, so this is the dance I need you to do. And I'm like, da -da 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 -da. you know, and then I'm hoorah Ryan when I'm going and leading a sales meeting and being inspirational when the market is crashing and interest rates have risen 6,000 points and things are okay, but they're like 2007 okay. Well, you started basically in a market crash. Yep. So, and you built zero to multi-million dollar business. Yep. If you were to do that again today, if, if you were thinking about the entire audience here watching, how would you go from zero to your first million? Uh, I would imitate, it just like I did. I mean, I, like I'm not from New York. Dude, like you come to New York City and you try to be a real estate broker, no one here wants you. And there's already 80,000 of us. Right? It's not like 80,000 buyers are running around at any given point in time. And so what you do, what everyone should do, is you immediately need to drop whatever ego it is you have and you need to work for free, which means you have to have a side hustle or a side job to be able to afford the bills and pay rent. You need to live with six, seven or eight roommates like we all did and go work on a team that is successful, right? Or go learn from somebody else for two to three years. 
that's basically like a law school slash business degree, right? And soak up everything you can, as much as you can, and just be like a sponge for information. After that point in time, now you can go out and do it on your own and you'll be where other people who try to do it by themselves because they're the best would be in seven years, except you just got there in two and a half. And then from there, it's follow up. Like I've always had three forms of follow up, which I call the three Fs, which are follow up, follow through and follow back. And so you're following up with people nonstop. And I'll never forget doing a deal with this crazy guy and it took me a year to get it done at the closing table when he finally closed a year later after torturing me, I asked like, why'd you go through with it? Cause he could have litigated, he could try to get his deposit back, like all the shit that goes through deals. And he basically just said, because you wouldn't leave me alone. I was like, so you bought a $8.3 million apartment because I was persistent? He's like, well, da, 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 da. but you know, basically, oh. And he goes, um, and I felt bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm not even offended by that. You, you, that is now my business plan. I'm going to be so persistent with everybody who doesn't know me that I'm going to make them feel so bad for me that they close. Um, and I am still the broker for many of those clients today. So the theme I'm picking up there, it's funny because I've interviewed so many billionaires at this point. And the one thing that I've realized is the key consistent pattern between all of them is just persistence. They just literally never gave up. It sounds like that. Always, man. I mean, listen, it's, it, it's, it's not the be all end all. Like I could go and try to win the marathon and I will fucking persist as hard as I possibly can, but I'm gonna die by mile 12, totally. right? And there's gonna be people that can run it in under two hours now. Yeah. And I will just never be able to do that. But my goal isn't to do that. My goal is to find my absolute best. It's not to be his best or her best because I, 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 I probably can't do that. No matter how hard I practice a jump shot, I will never be LeBron James, right? Yep. Um, uh, I could try, like, don't give up, kid. Um, but I know that that's probably not in the cards for me, so I might as well work really, really, really hard to not leave any wasted potential on the table for what I can bring to the table. Like, we're starting to expand now. We just pulled up outside our office. But we're starting to expand now. There's a press release that goes out on Monday, and we're opening six states on, on one day, right? And, like, the reporter yesterday was like, just one question. Like, why? Like, why? Why? Like, why do you? Like, your life was fine. And your real estate, bro, like, everything was fine. Like, why are you? Like, why are you so insane? Like, why? And I'm like, because I, I don't know. If I didn't feel like I needed to do this, I probably wouldn't do it but there's like an itch inside of me that says it's there. So I have to like, it's, if I don't move forward, then I'm moving backwards. And then I don't think that's fair to whatever legacy it is that I'm supposed to lead. Um, and I think that there's a lot of people out there who don't feel that way. And fucking dude, I envy them all day long. You know, I have family members who are like, good just happy they're just dude, chill they're just happy yeah i'm weekends. so jealous of them dude, i just want to chill out i know <laughs> they just like hang and like and i try sometimes i i cry to hang and i'm just super bad at it i love it mm -hmm. sounds like the intersection of persistence and sheer talent yeah dude hard work trumps talent when talent doesn't work hard yep all right let's hit the office I think the, uh, the summary of that is find the intersection of what you're insanely good at and really passionate about, and then also just never give up. Hey man. Wow, this is a sick office. You know what's so crazy about Soho? The guy walking by in his gym shorts right there, that's yeah. Tim Armstrong. He was the CEO of AOL. <laughs> like he was employee, I don't know, 11 or something at Google. And like, that's the craziest thing about New York. In LA, everyone's in their cars, right? Yeah. But in New York, like someone will bump into you and you're like, I can Mark Cuban get out of my way, you know? <laughs> do you want to like see the office? Let's do you do care? It. So we have, uh, we don't have desks, right? Staff have desks that have to be at computers. Agents, and there's, yeah, I don't know, almost 400 here, I guess now. Um, there's no desks. So they work from home. Wow. Yeah, they work from home. They work from their listings. They Or they come here and they print and they have team meetings and do stuff. So it's very much a clubhouse. Uh, this is 171 units across two towers. So we're selling the building 
literally from here. The, like the actual buildings are being built in Brooklyn, but we're selling them from here in Soho. So people come through, this whole thing lights up, like, you know, the amenities are in this secret little drawer right here. Oh, so we can sick. kind of walk through and then show everybody like, hey, this is the pool, this is the water, this is the East River, this is how big your gym is, this is the spas, your meeting rooms, your lounge. And then someone's like, okay, so I want a three bedroom, three bath with views of the water. And so then this whole corner will light up um, and then we can pick and then the floor plan show up here. We go through the whole thing. And then I, so far, and we just started this for this building. We sold like 30 apartments um, just from here, right? And then they go and they're like, can we walk the building? I'm like, go drive by. It's, it's fully under construction. We just go drive by. So this is the lower level. So this is where studios, ID Lab, which is anything that's not in motion. It's 8 a.m. and so these people are all slacking. Um, so education is in here, so that's in ventures. It's one of our podcast studios for the agents. So they come in there and talk about deals and interview developers and do all that stuff. So then this is like our clubhouse floor. So then agents come up here and they work, they hop desk, they plug in, there's conference rooms, there's cell phone booths. Like we have Zoom booths now, so you can sit here and just quickly plug in and there's like a 360 camera on that screen. And so you can fully sit there in like a little team meeting and Zoom and it's fully sound protected. Cause we like, we are in Soho at the end of the day. And like that traffic out there gets insane, but that's why the branding on the building is so loud. So they're forced to stare at us. <laughs> hey buddy. This is Ollie. Hi Ollie. He's the friendliest. He's a little company mascot. Hey. He's our <laughs> yeah, company dog. I'm just really hoping you have food. So Ryan, yeah. Why'd you decide to double down on content so early? I think you were years early to the game in some some way. Yeah, but at the same time, I felt like I was already so late compared to like the major players in the business. We started going like really serious on content probably in 2015, and then I doubled down on it hard uh, in 17. I think the vlog came out in January of 18. And launched it uh, uh, with Gary V. And it just, like, my, my, my idea with the content thing was, okay, so I have a television show that gets watched by 25 million people around the world. Uh, that does not last forever. No TV show has lasted forever. Um, and I've figured out how to build a real estate business on the backs of international media exposure that I have no control over. And I kept seeing, and actually, you know what it was? Um, I went on a vacation with my sister, and she's got two super young kids. And we went to this spot, we went to, we went to Africa. There's no TV, and so for me, it's like, the fuck? There's no TV in this place? And these kids were totally fine, because they had Wi-Fi there, their iPads. And then I started talking to them, I'm like, what's your favorite TV show? And they're like, what do you mean? And what do you mean, what do I mean? What's your favorite movie? And they're like, what do you mean? Like, And then their mom, my sister, is like, oh yeah, kids, they don't watch, watch TV shows. They don't watch TV shows, they don't watch movies. Purely YouTube. And I was like, YouTube? I thought YouTube was like how-to videos and like clay and slime and shit. And they're like, no, it's amazing what's on there. I had no idea, like I, you know, this was four, five, this is seven years ago. And I had like, had no idea. Um, and then I started looking into it. I was like, guys, this is, this is, this is Bravo. Like this is, this is cable TV for the next generation. Yes. And then the argument was, uh, okay, so it's such a young audience. Who's going to care for what we do? Like, well, I'm not going to stop doing Millionaire Earlist in New York. I'm going to do that still, obviously. And we were launching my other TV show, Set Like Sir Hand, at the same time. So I'm like, let's still do that. But, you know, you fight so hard for ratings on TV. If I can get those views or more by doing something on my phone and putting it out there, well, would I spend a year trying to make something to put it up on TV, right? If, if the exposure is maybe so much bigger online. And so we just started going hard as a way to like control our exposure and control the audience. And slowly but surely, people stopped talking to me on the street as the millionaire listing guy and started coming up to me and being like, dude, you're the YouTube real estate guy. You're awesome. I saw that thing you sold. I saw this. And then it become, you know, it was, and there was like 12 year olds like, oh my God, the TikTok broker. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> dude, like COVID was three years ago. I don't know what TikTok was when COVID started. And now you're dancing. Now you're yeah, in the now, woods. Yeah, exactly. Wherever the engagement is, right? Wherever the attention is, wherever the audience is, that's where you go. Um, if the audience was 1,000% for me on LinkedIn, all I would do is LinkedIn. Mm. Um, and so then you end up having to kind of be everywhere. But I think it's also important to, to not get overwhelmed by how many platforms there are. You have to think about like, what is your story? 
Is my story visual? Is my story thought leadership? Mm. Is my story spoken? Like, what is my story and what's the best way to tell it? Um, for me, my story is real estate. So my medium is, you know, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, because they're the most visual. Yeah. If you are a thought leader, you know, if you're a venture capitalist starting, if you are in finance, if you are, you know, startup, if you're doing research, then probably um, uh, your story is best told over Twitter and LinkedIn more than anything, right? And then you just have to figure out what your cadence is that way to get people excited to follow your journey. I mean, that's really what it is. People don't really follow me for like, for news. They follow because they want to come along on the journey, right? That's why I follow people, yeah. really. And I'm like, oh, what do we get to do today? Mm. One thing that you just crystallized for me is social is just, or creating content is just a way to build relationships at scale. Rather than having to do one-to-one, -one, you're doing one-to-many. Yeah, you end up having, that's what I tell all salespeople, you're not learning how to sell, right? It's the minute you think you're learning how to sell to sell more real estate or sell more cars or sell more fucking snow, um, is the minute you should probably go and do something else. It has nothing to do with what you're actually selling. People hate being sold, but they love shopping with friends. It's the whole reason you go to sh shoe stores and you're like, oh, yeah, no, I'm good. I don't need anything. Sorry, leave me alone. I don't care about your sale. And then you go home and you pay more money because now you're also paying shipping in most cases and built into the price for the same fucking pair of shoes and you don't even get it that day. Maybe you get it later that day or you get it tomorrow or you get it a week from now because you get to then send that link off to friends. Like, hey, what do you think about these shoes? Mm. Right, so now I'm shopping with friends and I get to do it on my couch watching whatever, you know, or doing my own thing. Uh, you know, it's far more comfortable. So you have to do that at scale with bigger purchases, right? That's why a lot of what we do with real estate now is completely digital. It's, you know, sending listings through videos, virtual walkthroughs, tours and stuff to friends. You know, it's like, hey, what do you think? We get them excited. Sales is just a transfer of enthusiasm at the end of the day. All right, so we got kicked out because Ryan has a couple more meetings, but we're gonna go meet him at this coffee too afterwards and ask him about mentorship. So, something that you talk a lot about is mentorship. Yep. Finding a great mentor. A lot of people out there don't have access to them. How do you go about finding that mentor that's gonna help change your life in some way? I think people don't think they have access to mentors because we have access to huge mentors in our phone, right? Yeah. Like, in my, you know, in my mind, I'm like, oh, dude, Michael Rubin. Founder of Fanatics, multi-billionaire, his penthouse at 160 Leroy is insane. He would be a huge mentor, but I'm probably not even ready for him. People need to look at mentorship the same way you look at school. Like you don't go from third grade to 12th grade, you uh. die, right? So the same way you level up your education, you have to learn, right? Is the same way you need to think about leveling up your mentors, right? Your first mentor, if you're lucky enough, is probably a parent, right? If you're not lucky enough to have that, maybe it's a brother or sister that's older. Maybe it's an uncle. Maybe it's grandma, right? As a first mentor, it really teaches you like, yeah, this is how the world works, right? That's mentor one. And typically it's one of our earlier teachers, you know, if you're lucky to, to do that. And then it's, you know, maybe then it's like a classmate. And then as you grow, everyone has access to mentors. You, you're just being unrealistic with who you think your mentor should be. Mm. You're like, well, I want to start a social app, so I don't have any mentor. I don't know Mark Zuckerberg. Like, that's what I kind of said. Everyone needs to remove your ego, right? Remove your ego. You, you know, my mentors, I don't know a single person that has started a real estate brokerage powered by media and grown through education. Like, I have no mentor that way. But I have clients that I've worked with for a long time who built companies, who started with no money from the ground up, who did totally different things, who I've done deals with, who like are friendly enough with me now that I can call them and say, hey, I have a question, right? I'm a part of, you know, different networking groups and things where, you know, my ideal mentor on Instagram, maybe one day I'll meet that person and that'll be awesome. But you need to level up your mentors the same way you level up your education. Same way, like, you know, you don't, if you want to lose 100 pounds, you don't lose one pound tomorrow and then 99 pounds the next day. It's an evolution, right? With consistency and, and persistence and determination and hard work and 
finding the right mentor goes the same way. That's why, like, when I tell young salespeople, like, join a team. They're like, well, that team sucks. Like, you know who else sucks? You, because you've sold nothing. Maybe they suck, but they've sold more than you. Learn from them, take the best, leave the rest, level up and level up and level up and level up. Mm. Right, so we're going, we're jumping in the car. We have to go sell a building and you're not allowed to come. So what's your final piece of advice for everyone? Follow this guy even more. <laughs> Hardcore, DM him, like send him new photos, everything like, like that, that's it. And follow me, I don't know. Yes. Just keep going, man. Follow Ryan, he's got tons of great advice. See you guys.